Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we've got a review for Studio Series number 45. This is the Deluxe Class Drift from Age of Extinction. And specifically, this is Drift with his helicopter alt mode. As you may know, uh, Movieverse triple changers have been a bit of a thorn in the side of the toy designers. They've never really been able to create a transformer that is able to attain both modes and still look anything like it should from the movie. So typically what they do is they'll just make a separate toy for each alternate mode. Now Studio Series has already brought us Drift from the Last Night, which was his car mode and his appearance between The Last Night and Age of Extinction are pretty largely unchanged aside from some small details and his coloring. You know, he switches from being mostly blue to mostly red. There's been an attempt before to make a helicopter mode drift toy. It was done in the Age of Extinction toy line. The toy was really just a retool of a completely different character and ended up not really looking anything like drift aside from just the head sculpt. So this is a much better attempt at capturing that side of the character. It is, you could say, a very heavy retool or at the very least it shares parts with the Studio Series Dropkick toy, specifically the helicopter one, not the car one, though it is almost entirely new parts, and we'll kind of get into that. So if you guys have seen my reviews before, you know how they go. We're going to take a look at the packaging, check out the instructions, and then I'm going to break down the toy in its different modes. I'll be doing some comparisons today, and then at the very end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So just packaging, pretty standard fare for a Studio Series Deluxe. Got your usual branding. It was named down here, Drift. He's number 45. Got this nice render of him. Looking like he's charging into battle or maybe sneaking. It's kind of hard to tell. Get the toy himself in here. Close up of his face on this side. And then over here, you have his robot and helicopter modes. And he takes 26 steps to transform, so pretty complicated for a deluxe. Got some cross cells for the other deluxes, and then a render of his backdrop. And over here, just a closer render of Drift. Right here are the instructions for Drift. See this render of him standing there with his weapons at the ready. First page is just his transformation of robot mode to helicopter mode. Transformation continues on the back here. And then over on this side, you have the different options for weapon placement. And then some cross cells, the other deluxes. Right in here you can see Drift's helicopter mode. It's very sleek, black, uh, stealth looking helicopter. The rotor does spin. It's made up of two of his swords and then two smaller blades. Uh, really awkward looking. I don't, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think a helicopter could fly like this if it had two long blades and two short ones. But that's what we're given. This, to me, is probably the worst part of this design. But aside from that, everything about this just looks very cool. It's got a little landing skid things here, got some front mounted guns, got some little missile launchers under his wings there, and you got a little rotor on the back. And a nice, just clear blue for the cockpit. And, yeah, it is fun to play with. If you can get over the weird rotors. For comparison, here is Dropkick in his helicopter mode. You can just see how extensively they've changed these two around. Uh, honestly, I think the only things they really have in common are like the little wings here and then parts of the leg assembly, but not even all of it, just like this upper area here and stuff. So to say Drift's a retool is kind of kind of stretching a little bit, I think. I, he's mainly a new mold, just with some small part sharing, which to me is a good thing because uh, I'm not a huge fan of helicopter dropkick. 
I think it's just a real dud in an otherwise very good toy line. I don't know, to me they just, they don't do nearly a good enough job making his robot mode look screen accurate. Whereas, you know, you'll see with Drift, he ends up looking very screen accurate despite turning into kind of like his alternate, alternate mode. Okay, transformation for this guy is fairly complex, but I don't mind that. First thing I wanna do, take this little rotor bit off. Just pulls right out like that, set to the side. Remove his two long swords from the rotor assembly, like so. And then these rotors, you're gonna bend them in till they kind of lock into place right about here. Form a little V. Next thing you wanna do, you wanna separate this tail section, like so. You can see uh, these little tabs kind of hook into these panels right here. So you're just kind of moving those out of the way. We are going to lift his cockpit up like that. There's his head hiding from you. And that kind of frees all this up. Next, you're gonna pull the cockpit upward until it kind of comes off like that. Get out of the way. Then you're gonna rotate this entire top section around, like so. Just watch for clearance issues, like with his head and stuff. All right, so you got that going on. We're gonna straighten his legs out. Let's go ahead and remove his missile launchers this time. Take them off his wings. Probably should have done that in the beginning, but it's fine, do it now. All right, then you're gonna rotate at the knees, 180 for each leg. The next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna fold these sections up. It's two hinges, so one hinge, two hinges. Make sure they tab in all the way here, nice and firmly. And then this whole section with the wing and the landing skid rotates 180, just like it does on drop kick. Fold the landing skid in, fold the wing in, and that's one leg. Do the same thing here. Just fold. Rotate, pull again. And there are his legs. So a uh, quick correction on something I just realized. Uh, to properly transform his legs, you need to flip his little guns down here. So you just open these up a little bit, flip them in till they're flush like that, and then close them up. And then they should close much more firmly too, so. Sorry for the oopsie there, but yeah, that's how they're supposed to look. So make sure you don't skip that step because his legs won't hold together very well until you fix that. Next thing we do, we're gonna flip these panels down like this, move the arms out and then rotate this up like so. And then you're just gonna Push it in until it goes into his chest like that. He's kind of forming his chest right now. That, flip the arm out, raise it up, and push it in. Just like that. All right, let's do his back real quick. Make sure the rotor is pushed in. That'll lock it into place and then you just bring the cockpit all the way up. And lastly, we're gonna fix his forearm. So you just bend this piece all the way. Same thing on this side, just like drop kicks transformation. And there you go. This is his finished robot mode. All right, now that you have this, we have to choose what to do with his armaments. The instructions show you to just put his little missile launchers on the side of his legs, and really there's not a better place for them to go. So you just carefully push those all the way on. Same thing on this side. I say carefully because they are made out of translucent plastic, so you don't want to snap anything off. Just kind of wriggle it in there. You get it how you like it. 
So there's that. Those will be mostly out of the way. And then for his swords, we have a few options. You can attach them on his hips using these little two different length tabs on each side. So you just press them in like that. And same thing on this side. All right, so you can put them in there like that. And they don't stand very well, so just try not to bump them because they'll probably fall out. But it does look cool. And then the way you can store his little rotor shield thingy is on his back. You just take it. Uh, the instructions have this squared off piece pointing up. I don't know how much it really matters. But you just put in these double slots right here. Press it in gently. And there you go. Got all of his weapons put away so it frees up his hands and everything. Makes him more agile. Uh, his articulation is very good. His uh, shoulders lift up and down. Also on ball joints. He's got a bicep swivel and a single bend elbow. Wrist don't articulate. Uh, head is on a very tight ball joint. So you get some articulation. Waist doesn't turn. Um, thighs are on ball joints. You got a single knee bend and then a thigh swivel. And then no uh, ankle tilt. The ankles just molded in a permanent A stance. So overall, pretty standard. You can see his chopper blades are sticking up behind his back, and those are meant to emulate the uh, small swords that he keeps back there. So it's a nice touch. It explains why he has the weird helicopter rotors like that. And now if you want him to wield his weapons, very simple. Just take him off his hips. Go ahead and plug those into his fists. And they're kind of hard to get in there. It's a tight squeeze. So you got to work them in a little bit. Try not to break them because they're pretty soft plastic. Just get them in there like so. And then rotor piece. You want to take it off his back, plugs in right here on his forearm to become, I suppose, some kind of a shield. So then you end up with this. So he's very well armed, he's very lithe and dynamic looking, which I like for a you know swordsman type character. And now let's see how he stacks up against his mold mate and his. Uh, other form. Here is Drift along with, all right, here's Drift's background. This is the desert hideout of the Autobots where Optimus takes, you know, the Jaegers to finally meet up with his long lost buddies and you got Bumblebee, Drift, Hound, all them hiding out there. So, you can go ahead, place him right on there. Not really gonna fit if you have his weapon sheathed. Poke out too far in the back. So, not to have him drawn for this, but he does look very cool. From the perspective, it looks like he's kind of standing on top of one of those plateaus. He's elevated up over all this ground down below. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any way to get his helicopter mode to fit on there because of the blade arc, but it's still cool to have. Still one of the more unique backgrounds. I don't think this one's been done yet. Drop kick in the robot modes. And you can see that they're very strikingly different robots. Dropkick is just this weird, scraggly, skeletal looking thing, whereas Drift is much more fleshed out looking, more armored. Again, really the only things they have in common are like their lower leg assemblies, and really only even part of those. The rest of it, as far as any major parts, are all different and Honestly, just thank God. If this drift looked anything like this dropkick, I don't think I'd buy him. Because he is not at all screen accurate. For a final comparison, here's Drift alongside his Last Night incarnation. It's also from Studio Series. And this is obviously his car mode one. Uh, you can see there's a decent height difference between the two. The helicopter drift comes in being a little bit shorter. 
which is honestly kind of annoying because Studio Series is supposed to be all about scale. Now, granted, this drift is really just a retool of a retool from the Age of Extinction toy line, so he wasn't really designed with scale in mind to begin with, so that may account for the difference there. Uh, these both look very good. They're drift at two different points in his life. I think overall, this one has a much uh, cleaner, more well-proportioned looking robot mode. And again, I think they just owe that to it being a newer toy, some better engineering, probably a higher budget, because I mean, the Age of Extinction toys were kind of not the best. But it is cool to have both forms of him in, you know, more competent designs than what we received in the Age of Extinction line. So I would pick this drift up. He's a lot of fun. He's very cool looking. He's a huge improvement over Dropkick. And I think he'll look really good on your shelf. But that is only how I feel about him. I'd love to know what you all think. Do you think he's worth going in on Drift again? Is he the best Drift we've gotten yet? If you enjoyed this review, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you like this stuff. If you want to see more like it or any of my other Transformers content, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you're always up to date when I post something new. Thank you for joining me again. And with all that said, I will see you next time.